Life is spirit. Life is genuine connection with God. It's genuine connection with godly people. When that connecting part, spirit is powerful in terms of connection. When that part gets shut down, life just absolutely changes away from what it was designed to be. Thank you for joining us for Effective Heart Change. The podcast will discuss how to apply faith principles to real life situations. This is Effective Heart Change. Well, it is good to be here with Effective Heart Change. Welcome, Dale. Thank you, and we like to welcome everybody to the podcast. That uh, uh, we do this, maybe, but really the reason that we are doing this is for you. It actually, I should set it there for you. <laughs> it actually does help if uh, there are people on the other end. But you know what? You and I enjoy this. You know, I, the, it's I come to the to the group sessions. And and I was I, I I didn't have any sense that I was above that at all, uh, but I've been e- even pleasantly surprised at how much uh, if you listen if one listens uh, that is applicable to my life as well as theirs, and that's one of the things I try to bring out to the group is that. I'm no different than they are. I I have my my ifs, ands, and buts, and and I get I stumble daily, and I need help just like everybody else does. Heart change is human condition. It's it's not addict condition. It's human condition, and the principles are absolutely universal. They're about who we are. They're about how we're created about how we interact with God to make more effective lives. That might tie into effective heart change. And when we pay attention to those principles, it really is, it changes our lives in good ways. Uh, We've talked about it many, many times already, but we'll continue because it's a matter of perspective. And and, uh, today, uh, one of the things that was suggested was that uh, we shut up and listen, and then somewhere along the line, then you can speak. Yep. No, that good advice. We, last time we were talking about a broken spirit, and the Proverbs eighteen fourteen says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Now, we're jumping off from that. Today, we're calling it shut down, and so we're little bit different. Last time we talked about a broken spirit and some of the specifics to a broken spirit, but kind of a cousin to that, very close to that. If you listen to this verse, a man in sickness, his spirit will sustain him. God has created us to where the spiritual part of us should be a strength. It should be a powerhouse, a source of life that really keeps us going through the difficult times. And what I find today, our culture especially, we don't have a lot of understanding of spirit. We're not in touch with it. Sometimes I'm going to say it's functioning. Sometimes it's not. Now, before we go too far, I don't believe it's possible for your spirit to be shut down, shut down. If it was shut down, shut down, you'd be dead. So there is a certain amount of spiritual function that has to be happening It's part of what I would call the breath of life. And when God's spirit is there communing with our spirit, that's the way it's supposed to be. But there can be a separation from God, first of all, and then there can be a minimizing of the spiritual man and spiritual function almost to the point of zero where everything's being run through the brain or everything's being run through the emotions. And the spiritual man is just kind of pushed off in the corner almost to a point of zero. So correct me if I'm not hearing this right, but uh, the spiritual flow, uh, you're talking about the positive, the, but there is the negative. And, and we go there uh, some, sometimes without knowledge of what we're doing. Sometimes we do have an idea of what we're doing, and just it's a matter of rejecting. 
but that that the power is what it's a, a a gift to the positive that is directional and and without um awareness of it without looking for it and and uh feeding that that part of you uh you're not going to have very much luck at, at moving forward you talked about positive and negative Fear and faith are a great example. We talked about trauma. We've talked about a broken spirit. If I've got fear operating at a high level, that's actually kind of the same spiritual zone as faith. One is positive vision. One is negative vision. Fear, I not only have negative vision, but I have a fear, a, an anticipation of pain and of negative things coming my way. Both of those are an example of spiritual function that's going on. There is also a dynamic at the spiritual level and a dynamic at the emotional level. And the spiritual level, it said, the verse says, the spirit of a man will sustain him. It doesn't say the emotions of a man will sustain him. So there is a fear emotion that we all have, and that jumps up you know, all kinds of times, all kinds of things. But there's also this thing at the spiritual level called fear that is deeper, that is a driver, and I can kind of turn off that spiritual function and just kind of come over here and, and live at what the Bible calls the natural man level, in which case I don't have that spirit sustaining me anymore the way I did before. Well, if my old memory serves me correctly, the Scripture says, fear the Lord. and, and uh, Basically, the message along with that is there's nothing else to fear if you fear the Lord. And that's not live in dread of, I don't believe anyway, that, but it, it, it is a, a deep, a profound respect for the one who has the, the power of life and death uh, and, and responding that, to that uh, honor and, and respect. Just about everything has a counterfeit. So fear of the Lord. There is a kind of fear, if you will, that's extremely positive. Fear of the Lord, awe, reverence. And it's so close in terms of language. I'm looking at this thing, and it's like there's a godly jealousy. There's a godly fear. There's a godly... All of those different things. And this is kind of what we talked about. There's a spiritual flow that's good, and there's one that's just so close to it that is negative. But what we're talking about today is not even necessarily positive or negative. It's almost a complete shutdown. So if I've got this huge fear thing going on, in order to deal with my fear, how do I do it? At some point, I become almost at a zero in my spiritual function where I just shut everything down. And people who are struggling with their emotions or struggling with different conditions, anger is another one that if a person can't control his anger, a lot of times, if he just kind of turns off that spiritual part, it's like all of a sudden he can control his anger because you don't have that vibrant feed of energy, which is the way we're designed. God designed for our spirit to overflow into our minds, into our emotions. So if I don't have that vibrant feed, now I can live at a very natural level with minimal disruptions. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about shutdown. So we're saying that uh, the way we deal with it is we don't deal with it if we shut down. Our inner man, that deepest part of it, is just kind of told to be quiet, sit down, shut up, if you will, and I'm going to come over here and live at what the Bible would call very much a soulish level. It just completely changes the dynamics of how people live. Let's take a few moments Explore a little bit of what we've been talking about, and then we'll continue. It's cold outside. Maybe someday. In the last segment, I kind of jumped in in this one area, and I really want to take that and explore it. God has designed us so that the spiritual man is supposed to be our deepest part. It's supposed to be the feeder. If I'm connecting with God and receiving the joy of the Lord, that should feed my emotional joy in real life. 
If I'm connecting with God and I'm receiving the love of God, that should feed the love that I'm able to operate with for other people. But if that part of me is shut down, and again, there's two different things here. There's the negative side, fear. I can be in fear and my spirit can really be active and and going crazy, or I can shut that whole spiritual side down just so that I don't feel those emotions again. That's what we're talking about today when we're talking about shutdown. The truth I hear you speaking is that our, our highest potential is our potential in our u- union with God. That spiritual side is the most important side, and the more frequently, the more intensely we pursue that, uh, the better the results. It makes us—I I don't like this word, but I don't know what other word to use makes us powerful. If I'm interacting with you, I'm sending message, and that message has spiritual content. So there's a love that sent your direction. There's a peace that sent your direction. There's a joy that sent your direction. If I'm drinking in from God and I'm full spiritually, I've got those things coming into me, so they're going to flow out of me. And when I'm talking to you, it's not just an exchange of information. When a person has that kind of spiritual life on the inside, they become powerful. And again, I'm not talking about lording it over, ruling it over. I'm talking about being a life giver. If I've got it, I can come along. I can encourage you. I can make you feel alive because you're drinking in my life. That's the way it's supposed to function, the way it's designed to function. Now, as a culture, we're pretty much dead to the idea (laughs) that I'm talking about of message. So we're totally zeroed in on, well, you give me words, I'll give you words, we'll exchange those words, and we'll think through the process, and then we'll come to a conclusion. And that's good. Intellectual exchange is a part, a dialectic, a dialogue and getting back and forth. It's all a part of good connection exchange. But if I remove the spiritual part, I'm removing a dynamic and powerful part of what life is supposed to be. Remove is an interesting word. I, I, would, uh, I would see it as denying that I have a spiritual side or choosing to just shut it down, uh, which uh, there are at least synonyms, if not the same idea. But uh, how we express ourselves comes uh, it can come from a spiritual level or it can come just from a, a human level that, like you say, it's just uh, I'm talking to be talking or I'm talking to convince you that I know more than you know or whatever the case. But the reality is we're transferring things spiritually, whether it be in a positive sense or a ne- negative sense. What's interesting, anger is a key one. A lot of times I run across people who is like, well, I used to have a temper. Well, what happened? I, and they're, they're like, well, I just stopped. It just one day, it just stopped. It just went away. And many times I find those people are people who have gone into shutdown. It's interesting, the evidence of their shutdown generally is recorded by their spouse or recorded by their children. And here's how, back to what I talked about with powerful. A person is able to shut down the anger because they shut down the spiritual part. So think about this and run with me. If your spiritual part is your deepest, strongest feeling part of you, if you are able to quiet that down, now what happens in terms of my ability to control my emotions? it actually goes up. So if all of a sudden I've had a life of pain and I've been traumatized and I've been through a lot of this, if I'm able to just kind of take and turn that off and come over here in a very mechanical zone, it actually increases my ability to control. And so at that point we go, well, that's it then. You got a person who's struggling, they're they're not handling life well, let's just get them to do shutdown. Because if they do shut down, they're in control, and life's now good. Well, I, what I hear you saying is that that, that shutdown can be a, a help, uh, an aid in uh, creating better vision of what they're actually dealing with. Uh, but prolonged, uh, it doesn't take you anywhere that it's, that's really in a positive sense. 
The problem then is on the backside, if you will, because once a person goes into shutdown, they're no longer powerful. And but again, isn't, it, isn't it interesting that there are people around them that you've mentioned, the family and, and, and spouse, can recognize that it's, it's not right, uh, and their denial doesn't change the fact that it's being uh, portrayed in their life. And especially wives, children, children expect, they have this natural inbred expectation to receive affirmation from a dad. They, they expect to receive unconditional love from a mom, you know, and again, not trying to be sexist and et cetera, but they're expecting to feel those things and to receive, and children are naturally spiritual perceivers. So what happens is a person is in shutdown, and they're saying all the right words. They're doing all the right things, and the child is kind of like, but I'm not feeling it. Something's wrong. It feels dead here. Who is this? And the conclusion ends up being, what's wrong with me? And I actually worked in a series that they were talking about highly broken relationships, and the, the wives of people in shutdown were struggling with deep counseling issues and depression and, and, a, and a low sense of self-esteem, a low sense of self-worth. Why? The people they were married to were in shutdown. And so they're looking at, and this particular study called them white knights, they're looking at this person who is a white knight who seemingly brings flowers and says the right words and does the right thing and everything's all good, and so I should have a great relationship with this person, right? But I feel like I'm lonely and not connected and I'm not alive, and so I guess something's wrong with me. So the product of this uh, shutdown is a sense of rejection for others, that, that, that somehow they're responsible for what's going on. They do. Uh, we do. All of us do that. All of us have a sense of ownership for acting out our spiritual we gift take it personally. And, and, and being who God created us to be. And so when that's not happening, it's like, what's wrong with me? Or sometimes we get angry at the other person. It can go either way. But shutdown produces these kinds of results. And so often people are out there not understanding that they're not being a spiritual giver, they're not being a spiritual receiver. Everything is at the basic intellectual level. Hopefully, we've stirred your thinking a little bit. This isn't your average discussion that you're going to get day after day. And we want you to press in more to it with some questions, and then we'll continue. We're talking about shutdown today, and again, this is something that's not talked about a lot, and I don't think it's well known, but when you shut down spiritually, we talked about you lose your power, you lose your vibrance, you change your message. There's another dynamic that's incredibly important. You also lose a level of conscience. Since you're not able to feel, you don't feel other people. You don't respond to other people. And during the spiritual layers, we talked about this. There's a point at which the child is supposed to get outside of self and outside of that selfishness, and they're supposed to, all of a sudden, they're, they're feeling other people, and it makes a difference in their world. When spiritual messages are being sent and spiritual messages are being received, a normal part of that is the development of conscience and awareness of other people and when I hurt other people. If I take away that spiritual sensitivity, I take away conscience. That's an interesting con conscience. Is an interesting concept. Uh, I know as a uh, guilty conscience is the is the connotation that I that I had as a child and into adulthood. Uh, what is conscience? Where does it come from? Is it spiritual, or is it Multiple personality, what? One part of conscience, I always talk about normal. One part of conscience is just you develop a normal 
and we tend to start feeling that right and wrong is whatever is normal. And I always whatever use, we think is normal. Yeah, well, the toilet paper is my my best example, just because it's a crazy one, et cetera. Does it go over the top? Does it go underneath? You know, and there's a normal there, and I don't want my normal messed with. And so there's a level of conscience that is developed just by patterns of life, and and we're created to do patterns of life, and so that's one kind of conscience. There's another whole area, layers of conscience that come out of this spiritual zone where I feel you, I sense you, I understand when I violate you, I feel God, I sense God, I understand when I violate God. That's a whole different level of conscience, and both of these kinds of things are at work in people's lives. So individual is a sense of life as I know it, uh, life as I believe in it. We talked about faith today, but life as I have faith in it. Uh, but there is a different one that's uh, uh, what we don't know, what we don't necessarily have faith in, and, and a connection with God. And so it's a, it's a more spiritual uh, level, at least in the uh, recognition of God presence. Think about the two consciences that I just talked about. One is developed through just daily life and interactions, and the person in shutdown still has that. He's able to look at other people, and he's going to just kind of stare them down. And again, he's thinking with his mind. He's not, he's not sensing with his spirit. So he's thinking with his mind, and he's trying to read into other people what's going on and how to respond. And if you've seen people who they're just they just have no awareness, and it's kind of like they always say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and they don't have sensitivity, there's a good chance that there's some shutdown going on there. Because if I really am spiritually sensitive, I'm going to be more aware of other people. I'm going to see them. I'm going to feel them. And my responses are going to be better at an instinctual level. Otherwise, if I'm in shutdown and everything's through the brain, I'm studying you and I'm trying to figure out what to say to get the re best response. And I'm probably saying to myself, that's exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I'm justifying my actions by what I read in you because I'm going to see what I'm dealing with more times than not. Yeah, you'll read into things and you, you, you'll come out of self, and that actually leads us into the next step, come out of self at a very high level, well, guess where narcissists come from? <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mirror. Okay, you're, you're good. That, that's right. Think about this. If I'm in spiritual shutdown and I'm not really feeling you, I'm not really feeling your pain, I'm not really aware of what's going on in you, then my whole life is about me. And I'm caught up in me in a way that I can now I'm, it's an intellectual game, and I'm going back and forth. And then you move from narcissism to people who have literally no conscience, where at, at, people can get caught up in a zone where they, they just they don't have that feeling, so they can do whatever. They can run over people. They can tromp on people. And that's, these are all products of people who are in levels of spiritual shutdown. When you're doing your list of you're not, you're not interested in the other person. This is the is the crux of the of all those things that uh, because we're so tied up in where we are, we don't really give a rip what where they are, and and if anything, we're going to be critical of them because it makes us feel better. What's interesting in a system designed for profit and and et cetera, these people can be amazing people, successful, absolutely. A person without a conscience who is able to run over people, who is, you know, puts away all of that emotion and just jumps in at a high productivity level, sometimes those can be your star employees that are producing at an incredibly high level to some extent because they don't have all that other stuff to mess with. You know, you've got that athlete that can be a headhunter and just totally destroy people and not really care about it in a way that's just kind of ugly a lot of times it actually can result in a form of productivity that people praise. And so then the person's like, I'm good. Life's good. I'm better this way. The language that goes along with that, if you think about it, he's on the court. He's, he's a killer. And, and he, he's cutthroat. He's, 
He's win at all costs. But off the court, you know, you don't often uh, get the, the other end of it. It's, it's his success is because he's so able to zero everything out and, and pay attention to the one thing, which is in this success. What's interesting here, look at all of the outcomes from a person whose spirit is, instead of shut down, I'm going to use a different word, it's muted. It's, it's pushed down to a lower level. It's not functioning at a high level. And so now everything's being run through this soulish intellectual level that's much more selfish at that point, much more about me. If you go back to the spiritual layers, you've got the child who is very me-centered at at age three, at age four, normally we're supposed to grow up. We're supposed to grow out of that, and spiritual connection is a big part of what does that. If that spiritual connection isn't happening, child's in trouble, how does that spiritual connection happen? It usually happens because love and life is poured into him as a child. That's where it really starts a lot of times, or there can be high trauma, high woundedness, and at some point, it's like, I've got to find a way to stay alive, and the only way I know to stay alive is not get healing, which is God's will, but I'm just going to shut everything down. Love overcomes all? Is that what you're saying? It really does. It, it, it gives you the power to live life the right way. There have been a number of important concepts that we talked about during this segment, so I want you to take a moment to discuss those, and then we'll continue. Well, we've been talking about shutdown today, and it's something that people don't really recognize to a great degree because as a culture, we just don't recognize spiritual. We don't recognize messaging. But in the last segment especially, we started going through outcome after outcome. When I'm not powerful, when I'm not connected to God, when I haven't received from people and I don't have that life to give, I start to feel like an oddball, there's pain, there's all kinds of things that come out of that that are negative. If I realize I'm in shutdown or somebody around me is in shutdown, what do I do? I find it interesting. We're here in McPherson, Kansas, and there's a, a refinery and there's a drug factory, two of the biggest industries in town. They both have shutdowns, uh, multiple, two usually, uh, sometimes more. But it's interesting, they are designed for times to do uh, corrections, to do rebuilding, uh, to add new assets, all those things are involved in it. And the more we discuss this, the more I, I see that in, to a personal level, because there can be very positive outcomes from a shutdown. A uh, shutdown. A shutdown. For a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you can deal with problems that you haven't been able to do on the move in the daily grind. But somewhere along the line, uh, you have to go forward. And to go forward is to put those things that have been changed into your daily routine, into your, your normal normal. And the title of the series, If Receiving is the Answer, the biggest issue with shutdown is it stops receiving. It stops it dead in its tracks, at least at that spiritual component. And that is, I believe, the most powerful component of life. So a big part of this just comes back to noticing. Am I even aware of, word that I use over and over again, am I aware of message? Am I aware of the spiritual dynamic? If I'm not aware of it, what can I even do about it? Growing up, uh, there was an expression that was planted in my brain. Be alert. The country needs more alerts. And, and uh, the, the message is uh, keep your eyes and ears, heart, spirit open uh, to the places that are, you do shut down and the possible solutions. I can't overstate this whole idea of there are people who their timing is just awful. You know, in other words, you know, I, I can remember one person that I was working with that I was just walking him through and 
it was actually a church service, and we were trying to walk through some certain kinds of things. And it's like it didn't matter how much you laid it out, uh, that person's timing would just seemingly be off, and it just it just didn't work. And my language, it didn't fit with the flow of the service. It didn't it didn't fit with the flow of the Holy Spirit, and and it was just awkward. No matter how much training that I did. And it's interesting, that person had gone through significant levels of trauma in his life, and that trauma had never been healed. He had shut down from it, so as far as he was concerned, he was good. Well, guess what? You saw the exact same thing in his kids' lives. His family, the next generation, were a mess, and they're a mess for the exact reason that we're talking about. He was a man of God. He attended church. He said the right things. He did the right things, but he couldn't give power. And that really highlights some of the solution that we're talking about. Generally, if a person is in shutdown, there is some kind of trauma. There is something deep. There is something painful there that needs to be healed. And too much of the time, people don't really want that healed. They're not willing to walk that thing through, so they stay in the shutdown. But that's the ultimate solution to shutdown. Shutdown sounds like a fixation. I get fixated on one certain certain thing to the detriment of all else because it becomes my focus. Even if I'm not if if I am not talking the talk, I'm thinking the thought. And and by being fixated on it, I'm projecting that to somebody else that I'm not really interested in you and you ought to be able to see what I'm struggling with and have mercy on me and grace, but I, I don't have time. I'm, I've got to take care of this myself. In a sense, you're totally right, because the person that, that pain is so powerful that you're fixated on it, but I actually fixate on it by actually just walling it off, leaving it there, and coming over here into a completely different function zone. So the people who, you know, back to this guy that I was talking about, he didn't talk about his stuff. In fact, if you talk to him about his family life, oh, no, I'm good. You Everything's know, good. House burnt down, so-and-so shot so-and-so. Uh, you know, I mean, it was as if nothing had happened to him, and he paper mache this thing, and then he came over here and lived in a different zone. So in a sense, yes, you are so fixated with it that you can't handle it, so you come over here, and it is absolutely controlling. It is absolutely dominating your life, but you're not even aware of it anymore. So its appearance is shut down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, to me, we fool ourselves in so many different ways, and, and it's putting ourselves in the best light. And part of what spirit is and spirit does is focus. It's, it's the most powerful part, I believe, of a, the human spirit is the ability to focus. It's the ability to think about thoughts. It's those kinds of things. And so you said it's the appearance of shutdown. In truth, that person, there is a spiritual focus on that thing that is so intent that it's just consuming. And so the person really isn't able to function anywhere else. So then I just come over here and live at an intellectual level. And this thing just really becomes almost dead. It's just, it's just there because I don't know what to do about it. And then you get the narcissism. Then you get the no conscience. Then you get the uh, actually white knight. You get the, the guy who's the great person, but just something doesn't feel right. Perfectionism uh, is another one of those things that, that we can, we can, we're crystal clear when we see it in somebody else. Well, what we're probably seeing is a reflection of what we're putting out. Perfectionism is a great illustration. People get into that zone, and that's their life. And we, we talked about that top performer. I can make life all about me getting ahead or performing or et cetera. And, and so, yeah, that, that's another way that we do it. But life is spirit. Life is genuine connection with God. It's genuine connection with godly people. When that connecting part, spirit is powerful in terms of connection, when that part gets shut down, life just absolutely changes away from what it was designed to be. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this. 
I would think that it's making you think because it isn't a common topic uh, in Christian circles. And more than that, I hope you'll get the healing you need. I hope you'll get the connection you need to step into that place of being powerful again, not lording it over people, but loving people, being a life giver. Video production, editing, and audio by Matthew. Set design and setup by Ashley. Content recorded live at Studio 104.